Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker, and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. Today's topic is economic and healthcare macro trends. So I have drawn a very complicated chart here on the board, but we're going to go through it in detail because there's a few important points about the macroeconomic environment that healthcare sits in that's important for us to consider. Okay, so we have percentages here on the y-axis. Those are percentage increases of various things. And then we have time here on the x-axis, starting in about 1993 up to uh, 2018. So we're talking like almost, you know, 25, almost 30 years, okay? Now, I have here at the top R1, R2, and R3. Those are the three most recent recessions. Now, the dotted line here, that's unemployment. You can see that labeled right there. And as you can imagine, when the recession happens, unemployment goes up, recession two, unemployment goes up, recession three, unemployment goes up, and then it steadily declines before it bumps back up again. Okay, that's one of them. Number two, uh, the X's, which are kind of hard to see here, that's the federal funds rate. So that's the interest rates, right? So you can see the interest rates here are at 2%, and they go up to 6%, then they go down to 2%, then they go up to 4%, then they go down to like zero for a long time, and now they're kind of recently creeping up, and then they've even gone down a little bit recently, right? I think the big picture here on interest rates is you got to think back. Overall, interest rates used to be 18%. People probably remember that back in the 70s and 80s. It used to be 18%. So overall, yes, interest rates have been bumping around. But overall, they're much lower. And people could think of that in terms of like the short-term and the long-term debt cycle. So each one of these things is kind of the short-term debt cycle. But the fact that interest rates have come down so much over a long period of time, that's kind of a long-term debt cycle. Okay. Now, next we're going to move on to, well, what's the whole point of the intervention of the Fed? One of the th they, they relate to sort of the, the goal of the Fed relates to unemployment and inflation. So let's look at inflation. It, this is amazing. Inflation has been two and a half, it's this line right here, this little blue line all the way across. It has been two and a half percent almost every year for the past 25 to 30 years. It's unbelievably stable. I mean, in terms of the goal of like stabilizing inflation, it is unreal. I mean, it even dropped to zero a couple times in 2009 and in 2015, but inflation has been incredibly low. Now, interestingly, the black line right above it is wage growth, and real wages have grown about one percentage point above inflation almost every year. And I'll leave a link to that in the in the show notes. But basically, wage growth is at three and a half percent, one percentage point a year above inflation. So you can think of like everybody in America on average getting about a one percent raise every year. Now you could say that's a lot or a little, you know. I personally think that's kind of a little, but that's where we stand in terms of wage growth. And then, of course, we're here talking about health care. And so you can see that the black line is healthcare cost inflation. And so you can see in the 90s, I made a previous video about this, in the 90s, healthcare cost inflation was very low because of HMOs. And then when the economy heated up with the dot-com bubble, then healthcare cost inflation went way up and then it came down to about 6%. And then with the introduction of CDHPs, it went even lower to about 4 to 5%. But I think the important thing here on healthcare costs is that the overall trend is in this direction, right? So it's getting closer and closer to overall inflation. So people are like, oh, healthcare costs are so, are so high and it's above inflation. That's totally true. But look, the gap between inflation, overall inflation and healthcare cost inflation has been shrinking rather steadily over the past like 20 years, all right? So that, you know, so basically if you took this, now this chart is a mess on purpose because it's very easy for us to get caught up in all the numbers on a daily, weekly, monthly, or even yearly basis, right? So in general, unemployment's between three and 10%. In general, the federal funds rate is between zero and 6%. In general, inflation is about 2.5%. In general, wage growth is about 3.5%. In general, healthcare costs are between, healthcare cost inflation is about between zero and 16%, but really overall, it's just been coming down and getting closer to that overall 2.5% over the past 20 years. So what's my point? As Warren Buffett says, Healthcare is the tapeworm of the American economy. So be it. That's true, right? It's, 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 the healthcare cost inflation is always above inflation, the overall national inflation, right? But it's getting closer to that overall inflation level, right? So the point is that the tapeworm is shrinking. The tapeworm is shrinking. So when people get disheartened about healthcare costs and they, you know, chicken little skies falling stuff, just know that in general, listen, the healthcare cost inflation rate it is going down. Now. 
it goes down for some organizations faster than others. Like, so, you know, John Tornis with Serograph, it came down to zero, and it's been zero for a long time. The state of uh, Montana, it came down to, like, negative, okay? So individual employers and individual agents have been able to dramatically lower health care much faster than others, and other people have been hanging up higher. But in general, it has been coming down. And I think the point here that I want to make is the one of my favorite quotes is from Thomas Edison where he says, look, opportunity is missed most because it is dressed in overalls and looks like work, right? So the opportunity to lower health care costs, like I don't think there's any sort of, I mean, look, it's kind of like marching on, right? Like there's no silver bullet. Like there's no like magic, you know, way to snap your fingers. I mean, it takes like small incremental changes day by day, week by week, year by year. And what's that called? That's called a lot of hard work. So in my opinion, Americans are good at working hard, right? That's kind of what we do. And so over time, we've applied that hard work to have it come down. It's just a question of by organization and by year and by priority for the organization, really, how much work are you willing to do? And so, like, people ask me, you know, how would you, you know, solve health care, decrease health care costs, you know, I think, you know, it just takes a lot of work. And, the, and really the point is, is that are you willing to do it? In my opinion, that's really the ultimate question. Are you willing to do the work? And if you are, then you can solve it. But if you aren't, so be it. Just accept that and just know that your health care costs are going to be higher. So that's my message today. It's really a matter of if you want to roll up your sleeves or not. And that's my point for today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.